So Amelia, we apologise for the unprofessionalism, don't we? But mm -hmm. she's currently on our way to the ground. Kicked off a few minutes ago. Yeah. Uh, stagecoach. Loves telling a little lie. Loves a little bit of a fib. Ah. We're nearly there, so two minutes into kick off, allegedly, if we're going by the schedule. But yeah, fingers crossed we get there. It is the quarter-final of the Cup and I'm here at the Armitage Sports Centre where the Salford Thirds team will be playing Unsworth. Over to Bix and Ollie for their commentary of the game. Ellie, try your best to try and record it from there. Test, 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 test. So, oh, it's like to move the... Uh, to zoom in, it's here. Right hand. Hold on, I need to put the... Yeah, nice one. The mics are already in, we need to make sure the sharp are on. Alright, we're just going to have to let go. I'll do the initial one and we're ready to go. Is that one lower? Is that a right height? Like this side, look at it. How low is it? Let me tighten it again because it's just going to go down. Mm. Oh yeah, that check the level. The level's oh, okay. 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 And we are finally underway. Well, that's us for one. Uh, the men's thirds have just kicked off. Well, about 15 minutes, God say, Ollie. Um, the last eight of the cup, a chance to progress to the final four. Hopefully the boys can get it done. We will get a score update with you, but today it is me, Victor Williams, joined with the lovely Ollie Spencer. How are you, Ollie? I'm very well, thank you. Glad to be here. Many apologies for the late start. I'm sorry that you guys have missed the first about 15 minutes, as Big says, of the coverage. But better late than never. We are here to cover the rest of the game for you. Cross whipped in. Oh, and we've nearly seen a goal just as we've got here. It's not a bad effort there. Whipped in. Unsworth there within a, I say, well, I say an early chance, early an hour ahead, because as we say, we just got here. But um, here we are. So the goal kick will be taken. Salford thirds here. So the plan is, uh, of course, the schedule. And we're going to try, you know, 
cover cover paper over the cracks by you know just trying to do some stuff. But I'm going to head to that uh, Salford bench right now, do a little excursion around the pitch and find out the numbers because I think that'd be really helpful. You enjoy yourself, Bix. Throwing taken there. It's a long one, looping in. Scrappy attempt at a clearance there by the number two for Salford. It's pinged away by Unsworth. Look like Unsworth keeping the ball relatively well here. It's a nice turn attempt there by the young lad on the far side on the right wing. Ball cleared. Bit of a scrappy one so far. Neither team really sitting into the game as of yet. That's a ball played forward, looked offside. Ref doesn't give it. Chance is squandered by David Byford. Intercepted in the middle there by Lennon. Out wide. Now Lewis Hiles puts a ball in. I'm trying to find Byford at the back post. He does get his head on it, but he's just sort of meeting the ball. Can't really uh, do too much there. It's a nice uh, pass across the pitch, but the young lad can't keep it in there. Hiles will look to take it quickly. That is uh, looks looks like a foul there. Ref has called. Byford just cropped down there. Chance for Salford just to compose themselves. It's looked a little bit scrappy so far from what we've seen. Ball's floated in. The keeper unable to collect and he does get a touch. That'll be a sulfur corner. I don't have nothing really. The ball was... Uh, Hopeful, perhaps the wind caught her. We have sort of got a bit of wind here today. Um, but the keeper sort of fluffed his lines a little bit there. Uh, he managed to get a touch and it has gone out. And Salford will definitely take this uh, corner. We're happy with the opportunity to put one into the box now. Looks like Lennon is to take. Lennon Boyle on the far side. It's a ball into the front post. Byford does contact, but uh, unable to get anything real... Uh, any real proper contact on there and it'll be a goal kick now. It's flown up past halfway line. The header is won by the Salford man. And he collects again, but it's given away now. Hiles as well to come in and uh, win that challenge. And Right back here, Finn will just uh, throw it in and he's able to win the tackle back after the uh, poor ball. That'll be intercepted there, but no, won back by Salford. Harry collects well in the midfield here, tries to put a nice through ball forward, but it's well defended by Unsworth. See Bix moseying his way back around the pitch now. He'll be joining me once again shortly. Ball's put in and Bifer collects at the edge of the area. Plays it out wide. It's back in. Hiles now. Swings one in. It's a really good ball. And the Unsworth man is forced to put it out for a corner. Lennon Boyle to collect and take this corner once again. On the different on the other side this time, but uh we'll see what he can do. Floats in this one. 
Oh, I almost like it went all the way in. But no, it uh, goes over the net. It's Paul Corner and he shouts uh, in anguish there at his own attempt. But I'll crack on and it'll be a unsuff goal kick now. Sent up long again onto the halfway line. Had a won by the Salford man. Hiles unable to bring that one down. It's his hoof clear. Again, just just a bit scrappy. And as, as you draw me back here, Bix, I suppose you might not have had a chance to really see a whole lot as you're making your way around. But neither team were really sitting too comfortable in this game so far. Well, with league positions and just how the standings overall look, you, you are going to get that. Of course, Salford coming into this game with a clean slate. A perfect slate, even with their record, but again, a division can mean a lot, and well, with both teams like, you know, I don't, I'm not 100% sure if one's worth playing regularly, it's an open playing field, and it's an even playing field, so you know what I'd say I'd expect to see this affair so far. Uh, and uh, a confirmation on the scoreline, we didn't see any, there were no goals that we missed, were there? No, the so yeah. 15. So we are at nil-nil here still. So... Big lofted kick over. Hiles, uh, the defender, misses his header and Hiles is able to collect there. He's in a really good position now. Ball into the box is deflected. It's a little bit scrappy there by Unsworth, but they get it clear. Only as far as number two, Finley there. Hiles collects game. He's playing on the right wing today. He's up really bright so far. Captain on band on again, as he had last time. Something that I always think about with Salford is the kits. Um, three football teams, three different uniforms. And how how do you think? Do you think they're passed down? So do you think this is what the first team was wearing a few years back? Potentially, is it, it is like an older style kit. This one, I've got to say, I'm a fan of it. I like the uh, the simple design. Uh, it reminds me of a lot of like a, uh, a sort of a Southend United oh. shirt, the home blue shirts that they wear. Um, well, I, I, we're comparing it to the other ones. Um, I think it's the first of like the 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 it's like a very royal blue and yellow stripes. Yes. I'm not a big fan of that. I, I like. I think okay. I, I, I like this a little bit more. Fair play. Yeah, it is. It's simple but effective here. Although one thing I have noticed there is a lad over in the far side playing left back, I believe, who has got different coloured sleeves, and that does annoy me, especially as they're the same colour as the opposition team, yellow today. Mm. Well, I don't know if you've seen this, but there is uh, currently two number sixes and two number nines. Bloody hell. Yeah, it's something we see quite commonly. You know, it kits a few and far between, as you say, probably passed down, so we'll have to deal with it. And the thirds, this is, well, they have lots of games left. They have many in the league. They have, hopefully, many more to come in the cup. Oh, interruption there, but it's uh, not a bad effort there from Unsworth. A nice ball put in, and the number 13 looks like it just bounces off his knee and out for a goal kick, but if he was able to bring that down, it could have been a really good goal-scoring opportunity there. So, as I was saying, you know, many games to play, but one game they won't be featuring in will be Varsity. Uh, the seconds will be in action on Wednesday, and then the firsts making their uh, about month-long hiatus will be coming to bed or making that return. The Wednesday after in Chester, but no game for the thirds, which is a shame. But you know, you do you have to make sure you can fit every single spot into their busy, busy schedule. Yeah, of course. And with all the league games they've still got left, it's no, not too much of a disappointment for the thirds. They'll be happy just to keep getting game time in. And with a majority of the team being first year, you know, you can't. Oh yeah, the opportunities are there for um, for next year, year after even. And that, yeah, that will be a foul by Ferds. He looks like he's complaining, but he, he did kick out a little bit there. I'll tell you what, just going back onto the kit, so the, the Unzif kit is very similar to like a Borussia Dortmund one we might have seen in like the early 2010s. Well, when I Got normally see that, that, that bright yellow, it reminds me of UCFB. Well, I suppose you're right. I hadn't made that link. But to our knowledge, it's, it's, it's university football but not university football at the same time. Yeah, it's an interesting one. We'd imagine a lot of these players on the opposition team. Oh, that... Oh, referee says no on that. 
I'm not sure. It looked like he went flying in. It did take the man. Maybe he got the ball and we weren't able to see that. Number 10 trying to get through here. Can't keep it in. It's just been a bit toothless from both teams so far from what we've seen. Um, neither are able to make a real big attacking impact in this game so far. But we have seen that a lot, you know, where uh, teams just slow to get off the blocks. And we've seen it with the seconds a few times where they've gone on to win those games by six, seven mar goal margins. So you never know. It's a late challenge, but the number six, six, uh, number six skips past him, I should say. Hiles here keeps going. The attack is uh, halted by Unzwerp. It's one back here by the left back. But a one-two and he shoots. And that's going to go over. I think he slipped as he took his shot. No excuses there on the 3G pitch. We 3G or 4G? I'm not quite I've sure. I've never been able to tell the difference. No, I, I don't know either. Um, but on this, on the uh, Astro stuff, it's, quite a, it's a good quality one. We, we've got a lot of praise for the um, facilities here at Armitage Sports Centre. Um, mm. Although, you know, we're already running late and then we find out that this game's taking place on pitch F, which is right on the far side of the entrance. So we're like, bloody hell, we've got even further to walk. But no, the, the facilities are fantastic here. It's, I'm right in saying, Bix, it's, uh, it's where all the, the Man Met and Uni of games are played. Um, I'm relatively sure Manchester Met play somewhere else, but this is for the Uni of. Of course, they, they are very close to each other, both campuses, but you never know. Here we go, Unsworth, put, trying to put a ball into the box. He touches enough just to sort of slow down that attack, but it's played back out. Ball in again. And he's there to meet it. Oh, it's an excellent save. What a save by the Sulphur goalkeeper. No one was marking him in the box there. It was an open header. But, I mean, he still put it to the left of the keeper and he's made an excellent diving save. Yeah, I would say Elias Bennett, what a job from him. Opened his body well and, well, it's point blank range. I, I didn't expect him to make uh, both hands to push it out, but he's done it. And if he can, you know, get rid of this corner, he's done a very, very good job for his side. Absolutely right. And it is cleared at the front post there, only for another corner. But yeah, point blank range. We thought I thought we'd seen the opener there, Bix. It was, uh, it was he caught the header really well. I, I, no discredit to the striker. I don't think there's much more he could have done there. Uh, it definitely wasn't directly at Bennett. But yeah, what an excellent save. One for his highlight reel, that. The ball's put in low again. Two poor corners there by the Unzuff man. And it is good to highlight the the level of keeper quality uh, here at Salford. Of course, in the first, we have Oliver Brockbank. He's been keeping it well for the lads in the first. Uh, the seconds, of, well, they've, they've mainly had Jason Davenport, but of course, Lennon, who's tucking in the midfield, they've been fine. And well... If Elias is like this for the rest of the game, we could be adding him to that list. Absolutely, yeah. So uh, they've got a lot to show to the thirds, you know. As you say, a lot of them first years, so they've got an opportunity to prove what they can do. It's number thirteen, quick down the left flank, but he's cut out there in the corner flag. Referee does blow for that one. It was a hasty uh, block. He did look like he kicked out and caught the man too, but no card needed. It's a silly foul to give away, really. Some of the players just uh, trying to get him to move the ball back here. Looks like it is being taken a little bit closer than the foul was committed. But the protests are... Well, they are successful. The ref does tell them to push back. Although now he's given up, he's just sort of made he's put made him put it closer to the byline, but no further back. But if there's anything like those crosses earlier, I don't think Salford had much to worry about. So what, I like I like the I think he's got skins. It looks like long sleeves. Reminds me of an old Arsenal kit. Free kick whipped in, Head headed out really clearly, well. but not gone. He's gonna go from distance. Whacked in, doesn't get the seconds, it will be a free kick. And I'm not gonna lie, what a cagey affair we've seen so far. It's, it's definitely a foul there. <laughs> Lennon Ball is not happy. I think I heard some very naughty words that I think in any professional game would get him in the book. But <laughs> the ref has probably done a good job just to calm him down now. Well, so has his teammate James Hickey there. He's a chair bot. He's a chairman, not a chair boy. <laughs> but it was a 
The uh, was it the number twelve for uh, Unser? He caught it really well there, but there's too many men in the box, and uh, the block was made crucially for Salford. James Hickey there, at the back, just sort of trying to encourage his men. You don't need to talk about everything. That one, you can let the sound try it out a bit. Did you mention this, of course? Throwing to be taken here on the far side of the pitch. Salford looking to push forward. And something I, I've been experiencing from my commentary times, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if you feel the same way. Do you get like the rush when watching the game, and and how similar is it compared to watching it as a just a fan? Yeah, I think particularly with university football. I mean, if we went here covering the games, we'd have you know little affiliation with the team other than just being at the same university. But, you know, yeah, watching the games, getting to know the lads. I know especially we, we brought up that camaraderie with the seconds team and I'm sure we'll have the same with the thirds the more and more we cover them. Uh, yeah, you do really get very excited. Uh, as if you've watched our coverage of the seconds uh, final game of the season when they beat John Walter in the league, you'll be able to hear that yeah. from me and Lewis Speed particularly. Well, of course, we know Lewis is an avid blade. He loves Sheffield United. Incredible touch, but not played off. But avid Sheffield United fan. I've not seen him celebrate a Blades goal as much as he celebrated. Uh, probably not that many to celebrate this season. Oh, Sorry, Lewis, low blow. He is always keen to mention uh, any players that share a similar, same name, same surname to a Sheffield United player or any ex players. <laughs> well, let's have, let's have a look, Ollie, because of course I've got my my love for the Owls. You love the mighty York, the mighty Minster man. Absolutely. Let's see if we've got any shared names here. I'm going to quick read here of the um, the team sheet. Nothing jumping out as of yet. I mean, I'm sure we've all we've had plenty of Williams playing for us in the past. It's very common. We had we had a Brayford. Uh, there's Byford on the Salford side. A bit of, <laughs> it's a bit it's a bit half and half. And uh, I've just seen, so we've got uh, obviously Lennon Boyle playing. Uh, William Boyle, ex Huddersfield, current Wrexham player, used to play for York City. Oh, lovely. There we go, there's the end of that little tangent. <laughs> Is that an uh, early sub being made for Unsworth here? Oh, you know, definitely has just caught my eye. And number 69. Uh, not yeah. sure how that got printed. I did see that earlier. I thought of mentioning it, but I thought I just think I might probably got a bit distracted. But yeah, eager eyed. Yeah, I assume that's the number he's chosen himself. <laughs> I'd love to know the reasoning behind it. I know it's a, it's an odd one. We do see you do see some higher numbers in the professional game, but not usually university football. Yeah, it must have just been coming through the academy. You know, you, you just take whatever number you're given. Perhaps he's really good at heading. You can take this. Hiles puts a ball in, but it's cleared out at the edge of the box. Salford still pushing to try win it back and keep the attack going. All right, it's really good play from the Unsworth man there. He's still got the ball now and plays it out. And what's the ref blown for there? And he's definitely got his work cut out for today, the referee. Two sides that, well, it doesn't look like they've played each other before, but by the way they're acting, I'm getting, I'm getting Millwall West Ham vibes from this. It's a young lad, the ref, and yeah, you're right, right, there's been a few shouts and screams and appeals, but he's, he seems to have done well to sort yeah. of handle himself. Well, um, Finley Gaynor is a referee. Uh, Sorry, you know, just to interrupt, that was a, a pretty harsh foul, we've got a free kick to be taken on the edge of the box here, cropped his man as he's getting past, but please continue, you're right. Yeah, well, it's really interesting to see how Finley Gaynor would give that, because, he's again, I, I, I try, we try not to bring it up. But he is actually a referee. Is he? Yeah. Um, so just he, of course, he'll play when uh, he'll referee games with men that are a lot older than him and now, similar age. One thing he always says is it's all about keeping you cool as a referee. You've got to expect a lot of grief from players. Here we are, the number fourteen for Unsworth to take. He could get a shot off here. But there are a few men in the box waiting. Looks like he's setting up to shoot. 
He does. It's not a bad effort. And another great save there by Bennett. Tipped out on his left-hand side. It was definitely going in. It's perhaps one he'd perhaps be expected to save. It was coming at him low, but he still had to get down for it. Yeah, of course. And uh, you, you can never tell, of course, the body language can give it away, but the, there was every, every good reason why he could just cross in. In the corner here to be taken on the far side from us. It's put in again at the front post and cleared easily. Not too far though. Oh, and it's floated into the back post. Skips past his man near the Unsworth player. Oh, and he puts it into the side netting. Soft for breathe a sigh of relief. And well, you would say the momentum is in favour of the yellows so far, but they need to just when it comes to that final pass and that final look. Find one of the teammates, because I'm seeing a lot of individual brilliance, but it's that teamwork which I yeah, think could give them the lead. Interesting you mention momentum. For as long as we've been at this game, it's it's just shifted a lot. Like I've, Salford have had really good uh, spells up top and on the ball. The Nunsworth have too. It's a really tight game. Both teams, you know, like I say, a bit toothless in attack, but, you know, it's not, you know, they're still putting a real shift here. Both trying. Both giving him a lot to work with. Well, I'm, I'm sure the thirds are going to be loving this. They're, they in, they are in a division which is, I would say, too small of a pond for some pretty big fish. So being able to play in such a cagey affair is, is perfect for them. Yeah, one thing we always say here at Salford Sport TV is we love the uh, exciting games where it's very competitive. You know, sometimes it's great to see a goal fest every now and then, but... Ooh, just interrupt myself there. It was another nice ball put into the box, but cleared well by Salford. Looking to launch an attack, but uh, subdued, and Byford does well to keep it, but perhaps he should have just passed it back there, kept the ball. Some nice floated long balls from Unsworth. That one's just put a bit too much weight on it, but you can kind of see what they're trying to do, can't you? Get in behind. It's looking at, I think Salford, what they lack currently is a midfield premise. Presence, sorry. Um, currently, uh, from my inside knowledge, Lennon is usually is a goalkeeper, so playing about out of position, a bit like uh, one of the shapeshifter cards on FIFA. <laughs> I have to agree with you, right? Yeah, the, the midfield's just like they haven't really been able to get the game under control. But uh, yeah, I've got an pairing him, you know, as, as one of the other eights is Sam Rogers, who are. Uh, I've been told, has just returned from Italy. Had a very lovely weekend. Didn't get much sleep, but had some great nights. Uh, it's not showing in his performance as of yet. Hiles here. He's trying to put a ball in. He's nudged off as well, but no foul here. Although a deflection will lead to a corner for Salford. Appeals from the Unsworth player. I'm not sure if I saw a deflection there. I think I did think he was caught off balance. Maybe just put his uh, cross wayward, but <laughs> certainly... And Rampant goodness. appeals. Uh, Oliver, a quick question. Any players in your fantasy team, Liverpool or Man City? I have got three Man City players uh, and I benched Kelleher. Oh, so no Liverpool? I don't think so. It is one all. Wowee. McAllister with the goal. My Darwin Nunes with the assist. The corner whipped in. Goes wide, but there's a smile on my face because that is three points in my team. I'm not entirely sure how it works, but I did have Nunes for quite a long period and I got rid of him, so I'm gutted with that. No, he, he had that blip, didn't he, where he, he just, did. He just he's he's a very consistent player. Yeah, I, wonder, I wonder, it'd be interesting to have Statman Sever today to count oh. the fouls. I, I would have thought we've seen about five or six from each team already. Well, Sever loves three things. Valorant, Aiden Stone and Wrexham. Well, fuck it. I don't do the rest of <laughs> Four things. And he loves stats. He and loves stats. stats. It's a hopeful attempt. Very ambitious. Ivan Tony-esque from uh, yesterday's that game. That was... I, I was watching that in a pub in Birmingham on the way back from uh, seeing York play at Kidderminster. And yeah, that was a really audacious effort, but it nearly paid off. Fair play. It was a good save from uh, Ramsdale to get back at it. Mm. He's he's been getting a lot of stick recently, Ramsdale. Yeah, he had that uh, that howler in the same game. Yeah, but I think from what I saw, the rest of his performance was pretty solid. I was actually with some Southport fans in that pub, and they pointed out that David Raya had played on loan for them. I bet you didn't know that, did you? Whilst he was at Blackburn, uh, he went on loan 
with Southport for a while. I don't know. There's, there is a good few keepers who have just been here, there, and everywhere. It's lifted over. Could it go in? It's cleared. I tell you what, it's another really good uh, stop by Bennett. I was wondering, it was a very risky decision for him to come out to that, but he managed to get a touch on it, which just puts it off course, and the defence are able to clear. And confidence is key, really, isn't it, in football? Yeah, absolutely. I think confidence and team spirit can account for a lot more than ability at times. That's why you see these huge upsets and, um, in uh, competitions like the FA Cup. Holy Spencer, that was beautiful. Oh, and that's oh. a terrible challenge. You think the ref would get his card out for that? Yeah, well, he's got to really. How many fouls have we seen so far? There's been far? a lot. Byford's chopped down. It's He must have gone. It, Flying into that, it's got. It must be about a foot off the ground for that challenge. No, or well, something I think that we have forgotten is, it's not a Wednesday, it's a Sunday, and that was a very Sunday league s challenge. Yeah, it, it is like we're watching a Sunday league here game uh, game here today. Um, it's very scrappy. I uh, put put your bets on now, folks. Will there be a kick off at some point during this game? I'd probably say there will be. Balls put in. Well, good save by the keeper. That's cleared oh. well by the Unsworth man, but the ref decides to give it a foul, and that's probably the right decision there. Southam man went flying into him. The ref will bring it back. He's taken too quickly for his liking. But yeah, credit again to the ref. I think he's, like we said, we've seen a lot of fouls, seen a lot of scrappy play, and he's done really well to sort of keep this under control so far. Solve a win from the goal kick here. Oh, another clash of titans there in the middle. <laughs> it's really scrappy. Number six there, chopping away at the Unsworth man's ankles. Lovely ball, collected. just cutting the line. But oh no, he's great. He's recovery. kept it in. It looked like he might have put a bit too much weight on it. This comes out collected by the Unsworth man. They're hunting here. Number eight. Almost looked like he was lining up to shoot, plays it out wide. It's a floated ball in. Salford should deal with it, but he's headed out to the number six in the box here. Turns, shoots. Another great save by Bennett. I tell you what, he has had a fantastic game so far. He's probably the only player keeping Salford in it right now. It looks like the back, the lads at the back need to wake up a little bit. And yeah, like, well, especially having a man like Kiki in your defence, you've got that presence, uh, both, you know, vocally and physically on the field, but they just need to come together right now because you can only knock on the door so many times until someone answers with a goal. We play it on. Knock down the right. Bit too much part on that one. Number 10 can't keep it, but he does put a ball in. Headed away. And again. Unzuff really hunting for a goal here. And the ref blows for half time. That's a relief for Salford. Unsworth looked like they might have been able to catch one late in the second half there. First half, sorry. But we go into the second half now. Nil-nil. Both teams all to play for in this game. We'll join you back again for the second half. And we are soon to return to the action. And from what has been, well, from you know the, the score sheet not that exciting, from someone who likes seeing a physical tackle, it's been a great half. Yeah, it really has. Um, I was just having a word with the ref there at half time. He says it's, it's been a pretty pretty good game. He says he likes the ref ones like these. Fair play to him. A bit more excitement, you know. You don't always expect goals in football, but you can enjoy your game for other things. Well, I can, I can just imagine, you know, we've seen a few high scorers on, you know, the, the giving and the receiving end. But... Um, I agree, you know, when you have to make these constant decisions, it must be so much more enjoyable as a yeah, referee. Yeah, it keeps you on your toes, doesn't it? And, and I think with the constant decisions, you're less likely to make a mistake. You know, if you've sort of been out of the action, you might have a little rush of blood to the head and rash decision and make a poor decision. I feel like, of course, I'm not a Finley Gainer, I'm not a referee, but um, 
if I'm like, if, if I'm watching a game where one side's ten nil up, I'm not, I'm not going to have a clue uh, really about some of the decisions because I might just get a bit sidetracked. But that could be me and my short attention span. Byford puts a lofting ball forward. The other number nine chases. <laughs> Lays it off here to Isaac. We'll put a ball in. David is able to bring it down in the box, but can't get a turn, can't get a shot away. It's cleared. And Owens up to counter attack. That was definitely offside. Ref doesn't see it, but the keeper collects. And I definitely have a feeling if we're going to see a goal in this game. It's going to be a screamer. I don't know what, what I see. I, I'm feeling like, you know, one of the midfielders are just going to say, oh, go on then, smash it top bins. That's that's my prediction for this half. Well, I think it's either going to be that or it's going to be a really scrappy, like, tapping from a corner yeah. or something. Yeah, we've got no, no leeway. <laughs> but both, both teams have had been pretty solid defensively in the box. I mean, you know, neither have looked really likely to score yet in this game. Kept in just in front of our camera here. That's really well done by uh, the number nine there. But <laughs> number twelve's done really well to keep the ball there after being piled onto by a few Salford men. Pretty cold one today, isn't it, Bix? The wind's not too strong, but it's certainly nippy. So the, the weather's been improving as of late in games we've been covering, but this is a step back in the wrong direction. Yeah, it's just it's just England for you, really, isn't it? Well, uh, I don't know if you know, but um, really for every sport in the books uh, system, uh, the, at the very top divisions, a certain group and a certain number will qualify for European sport. I couldn't imagine it would be... Uh, it's, it's in Hungary this year. I couldn't imagine it would be wow. too cold there. Exciting, eh? <laughs> yeah, well, you never know. It could be some of these men on this pitch if they just get a few wins. Am I right in saying that that's when the Cardiff Metropolitan Union nearly... Because um, they're in the Welsh leagues as well, so I think it was a lot easier for them to push through. But didn't they nearly play in the Champions League one year? Oh, I think that I think that may be a bit uh, different. I'm sure the Welsh unit teams, they can enter the leagues, right, yeah. yeah. But it would be, they would, uh, let's say, Salford's first for the Rugby Union... Shout out the Rugby Union. They go through to Europe. Um, they would play like, I'm assuming, like maybe maybe Paris first. I'm not sure. It, it, it would be Unity versus is, other is, Unity. Is Paris though. the Twin City of Salford, you reckon? <laughs> what is the Twin City of Salford? That is something I couldn't tell you. Bixer eagerly gets his phone out to check. And whilst they get it up, Ollie's going to explain what a Twin City is. Well, I might do after this, but Salford are putting a ball into the box. It's just floated a bit too far, but it's kept in. Byford wants to get it down and get a shot off. He does. Oh, it's not far away. He's put it wide for a goal kick, but not a bad effort from Salford. And back to it. So it's Twin Town, Twin City, Twin Village is a, a alternate city, town or village, that um, is matched with a um, another town uh, for a similar size, like population, uh, like culture, history. So I know the... The twin city of York is Dijon, or one of them is Dijon in France. And it's, it's very common between like European cities. So you'll have a twin city in maybe Germany or France or Spain. Well, we'll, we'll keep on the topic of France. Salford's twin town is a uh, Clément of Ferrand. Oh, yeah, home of Clément Foots yeah. football team, yeah. Oh, and perhaps we're just uh, moping around talking about twin cities. I think the ref might have given a penalty there for a handball. Well, and now unreal. this is certainly a chance to get into this game... We said it might have needed something special or something a bit scrappy, and that certainly looks it. Well, it was the twins, the number nine twins, who decided <laughs> who were going to take it. We've got a lefty stepping up for this one. It's uh, David Byford, uh, I think the true number nine here, the central striker to take. 
And he puts it, oh no, he puts it against the post. I've got to say, it was a mess of players in there. And I thought he'd buried it into the bottom corner, but no. And now Hunsworth for attacking on the counter. Number nine down the right flank. In the in the Watford SK, could they puts have their any moment? Hunsworth won a handball, and it's scrappy as anything now. The Hunsworth players are fuming. They reckon they've seen a handball at the other end. Could you imagine that, seeing two players for handballs, but... Wow, wow, wow. I tell you what, this game's just come alive in the last five minutes or so. Um, the referee said he wanted work to do. I'm not sure he was expecting that much of an offload, but what an unlucky penalty. He's done such good, such a good job with his body language to you know direct the keeper in the complete opposite way. That just inches. Oh, it's a really oh. good cross in. Oh, the, the volley is uh, just skimmed off the number 12's foot there. He was looking for that spectacular that you were expecting there, Bix. But, yeah, what, what a period of football we've just seen. Yeah, Byford will be a bit gutted with that penalty. But I've got to say, as you say, credit. He sent the keeper completely the wrong way. And he, he had arrowed it right to that bottom corner. He'd clearly had just a couple inches off. But, no, it's hopefully that'll spur him on now. And, of course, um, we are in cup competition. Uh, so, as that means... If it's a draw at 90 minutes, we could have extra time. And, of course, we could have penalties, Ollie. Is that how it works? Does it go extra time first and penalties? I assume so. I assume so. But um, when the Salford ladies uh, competed in the Cup and we made the trip down to Leeds, that did go straight to penalties. Interesting. Yeah, that would be something to watch and cover. Well, we've already broken a lot of Salford Sport uh, record books covering the first game on a weekend. Uh, but we would be the first duo to ever watch a shootout. Yeah, I'd, I'd be honoured. But now Salford pocketing it. It's gone really end-to-end -end now. Byford's at the edge of the box. Unzuff done really well to sort of stop his attack, but it is played out. Hiles now puts a ball in. It's cleared. Really end-to-end, -end, Bix. This has uh, really come alive now, this game. Of course, being, being in Manchester, I'm assuming there's a few City fans out on that pitch. I bet they are. I bet half time, you know, the coach would have been saying, you know, do this, do that. My eyes would have been glued to my phone just to see how the lads were getting on. And how is it getting on? Well, of course, you already know the result, but Mohamed Salah has apparently entered the field. Oh, very exciting. I brought him out of my fantasy team for Haaland. I used my um, wild card last week. It paid off for me last week, but I think I've an absolute stinker uh, this game week. Hiles puts the ball in. Uh, it's easily collected by the keeper. Could be wrong. Sunderland have had a similar kit to uh, Unsworth's today, no? Yeah, they might have done that. Yeah, I never would have thought that, but you might be right. Hmm. I'm, I'm, again, I'm also thinking of just that classic Arsenal one. I think. Yeah, like what the, uh, like the the Van Persie era. Oh Arsenal, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to think of other teams now. What? How many? What teams in the UK play in yellow? Like there aren't. Really? Nor you got Norwich. Boston. Uh -huh. Boston United, absolutely right. Shout out non-league. <laughs> not, oh, not a shout out to Boston. I bloody hate that club. I hate that place. <laughs> I hate that club. They were our, well, they were our bogey team for a long time, but then we got them in the playoff final and beat them, so I can't complain too much. <laughs> Unreal. But I had an absolute howler of an away day, though, with my little brother when I was about 15. Terrible. Right, enough said, enough said. But yeah, you're right, Boston also played. Uh, it's it's you... a bit of a darker yellow Boston, if I recall. Oh, okay. But... Did you, have you mentioned Watford? Well, you mentioned Watford earlier. I yeah. haven't just then, no. I bet we're missing some really obvious ones. Are there any Scottish teams you can think of? I might, I might be making it up. But the Dundee, one of the Dundee teams playing? I know, well, I know one of them playing Orange. Maybe that's what I'm thinking of. Yeah, that'll be it. Well, if uh, the B Network in Manchester want to oh, yes. it, they would be loving it. Shout out to the B Network. Apparently, I've seen from my Instagram at coming to Salford. Yes, I've uh, heard all about it. I can't wait for them to release some more information on it. We do appreciate all the work Andy Burnham and his uh, crew do to, you know, bring affordable public transport, especially to us students. You know, that number 50 bus from the Media City is really helpful for us. If the B Network, uh, listen, opening 
to offer a competitor. We wouldn't complain. Absolutely not, no. Brought down by uh, Byford, who's trying to play it out to launch an attack down the flank, but it's cut out. Oh, and that ball's floated over. The Unzuf man is able to collect on the left flank here. Turns his man. Still got it now. Edges to... Oh. So he put it to the edge of the box for uh, number nine, but the blocks... So the shot is blocked, I should say. Salford eager to get this attack started quickly. Ref brings him back. He did steal a few yards there. Or is it called back for an Unzuf throw? I think it is. And then Boyle pushing through. That's an excellent challenge there. Oh, ball. <laughs> I'm surprised the ref hasn't blown for that. I think, oh, he's giving it advantage now. They have been absolutely at each other's throats, haven't they, Bix? Well, I think, you know, of course, the thirds, they've pretty much got their league wrapped up. And this is... Well, one of the only chances they're going to get for the remainder of the season to play, you know, consistent, competitive football. So just going out of the cup, I know, would be a huge blow to a lot of their players. Yeah, cup runs always great for confidence as well. Um, it helps bring teams together. So they'll they'll really want to keep going. But I tell you what, we've definitely been treated to a really good competitive game here today. If, you, if, if it depends how you look at the sport, because I love a nil-nil. If it's if it's if enough goes on, a nil-nil can be very exciting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I completely agree. Um, oh, that is oh. a flying challenge from Isaac there. Ref seems to think he got the ball. I think he took the man first. I'm not going to lie, but it's an absolutely brilliant warrior challenge that. Fair enough, because I, I I've played on 3G before. I would not want to be slipping and sliding on it. Yeah, I'd be surprised if he hadn't skinned his knee open doing that. It's going to be a long bush journey back. <laughs> and it, it, it is interesting to see how Salford are now reacting to a game where it's not confirmed, it's not a comfortable win. And, you know, it, it's going to be different to see if they can live up to that pressure. It's something the seconds have seen. Effort from distance. Oh, it's Keeper not bad. Had it, he had it covered, but... It's not a bad effort. Yeah, I'd like to see him taking some more ambitious shots like that because as I think you mentioned earlier, you're expecting to see a goal like that potentially if it's going to be one in this game because neither team have really been able to build anything going into the box. Uh, it's just that final pass, that final shot has just been lacking. So yeah, fire them away. You never know what's going to happen. It looks like we've got two pretty good keepers here today. Force them into some saves. Boyle collects it and pushes forward, plays it through. Oh, that's a nice Tricky little... Uh, Byford collects here. Has the shot. Side netting. Knocking on the door again of Salford. Just going to have a little mess with the ND filter here, so you might see a little change in the light, and I think that's a bit better. I'd say, I'd say that's improved it a bit. Yeah, so sorry to any sore eyes who are looking at the darkness. Let there be light. And the, floody, the floodies have turned on a few minutes ago. Yeah, it's a bit of a cloudy one today. I think the sun would have still been out. It hasn't got set quite yet, but it's just the, uh, the beautiful grey skies of Manchester have taken over oh. today. Can't wait for some of it. How about you? Oh, I'm just the only thing that really keeps me going in life is knowing that we're only a few weeks, a few months, maybe, away from just being in, you know, 
being outside the SU. A nice cold drink in one hand. And you know what's in the other hand, Ollie? Our microphones. Another cold drink. <laughs> Perfect. I was thinking more on the professional wavelength there. But I respect it. A cold beverage of your choice. Of course. Not everyone has to drink alcohol. And a shout out to Thatcher's, a great brewing company, awful Prime Minister. But that I was going to say, yeah. That's my, that's my own opinion. That uh, <laughs> technically does not represent Salford Sport TV. But, um, well, I'll, I'll back you with that one too, Bix. <laughs> yeah, just make the, the release this range of cider. And, and the new model of the Salford Student Union, shout out to the union. Uh, they have a cloudy lemon, an apple and black currant, and my personal favourite, as Amelia mentioned, the blood orange. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm not a huge cider drinker, but I'd really like some of those sweet ones, and Thatcher's do it perfectly. I'll give a little shout-out to my favourite cider uh, brewery, Rattler. Oh. It's a cloudy apple Cornish cider. Of Absolutely gorgeous. And if you've ever had a few of the flavours, uh, they are stunning. They do a lovely mango one I'm a big fan of. Um, 4% tastes like juice. And the, the regular apple one, 6, 6%. I tell you what, it, it is a Rattler. Um <laughs> And it tastes just gorgeous, I've got to say. What is your go-to drink, though, Bix? Is it uh, Thatcher's Blood Orange? Listen, I like to keep the gimmick that um, I'm, you know, I'm really hard and intimidating, of course, from my side. I've got a, a bit of an effort there. But uh, I like I like to think of myself as someone who's hard, so I will always opt for a beer if I'm out with the lads. But if you know what, if it's just me drinking alone in my dark room, give me a Blood <laughs> Orange. Fair play, fair play. Yeah, well, I've got some a big fan... Uh, I've gone off them a little bit as of recently, but I'm a big fan of my uh, sort of IPAs and you know, the experimental Ooh. ones you found down on the uh, on the draft. But as of lately, I've gone off them a bit. I'm a real big fan of a real ale at the moment. I've got give myself a little shout out. Anyone who's listening who I've already shown is going to wince now because I <laughs> don't stop mentioning it. I did a pub crawl on Friday uh, in London. Obviously, we all know how expensive it is, uh, and they do a lovely pint of Ruddle's Best at most spoons. Uh, which I think even in London costs like two pound ninety, maybe, maybe, maybe even cheaper. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, in yeah. London. Yeah, I know, right? Um, and that's uh, we had a few pints of them, and I did one of them. I beat my pint time picks. I nicked one of them in four seconds, which I'm very impressed with. You're the writer. Poor touch there, and it goes out for a self of throwing. Now it's just the game's just settled down a little bit now, as we're sort of quite deep into the second half now uh, you think maybe it's going to sort of pick up again in that last 10-15 minutes yeah well listen it just gives the audience the time to listen to Bix and Ollie commentary which oh, is yeah. it's, it's why they're here I, absolutely I mean I, I do hope you guys at home watching do appreciate these little tangents we go on we like, we like it because it just sort of brings a bit more like humanity to the commentary and obviously we're here as students as well um, and when you have these oh, big that... efforts going into the top right corner out of nowhere, they really have made it work. And it's a lead for the visitors. He struck that phenomenally. We've got egg on our face through we here, Vicks. We're just waffling about our beers. And are even justifying it. And Unsworth have just got a brilliant goal. They managed to work their way into the box. And they've struck it. Keeper had no chance. Bennett can't knock himself for that. But the defence will be asking questions of each other there. Was he closed down quick enough? How has he got the shot off? But Salford now, they've got something to play for. They've got a... Uh, Goal deficit to bring back. Unsworth leads. Yeah, we're at about the 65-minute mark where that one went in. Plenty of time left, but it has to be a fast response from the University of Salford. Salford, we think back to all those chances, notably the penalty. Um, and uh, they'll be kicking themselves now, especially if they can't get themselves back into this game. But they've, they've got work to do now. Certainly do with a pair of gloves now. The wind has picked up a little. It's a bitter cold day here in South Manchester. It's a lovely ball floated in by Lennon. You can see the wind's caught it, but it's still won. Keith was able to collect, though. So it's like, a, it's like Oliver Kahn in there, with the, with the grey shirt especially. <laughs> it's a really good reference, that Vix, really. And you're absolutely right. 
through. A lovely little uh, dance move, I'm going to say, to get out of the way of that ball there. You know, we, we now have a bit of story into the game. This is probably one of, one of really only times the thirds have been in a losing position. They're, they're used to having, you know, the security of being a few goals ahead at this, this time in the game. But... It's all about reaction. They, they can't get into this. Again, they can't get into this foul trouble now. This is what could cost them. No, you can't be doing this now. You're a goal down. They've really got to pick themselves up and uh, show their quality now. You know, uh, otherwise the game could just get away from them. And first things first, do not concede another because that's going to give you a real mountain to climb. Well, uh, hoofed up there, away from danger. Unsworth breaking forward again now. They've got space to work with here. Into the box. Blocked and now cleared. Oh, Hiles is there. Uh, it's foul there. Oh. Appeals from the owners players. I don't know what they're really feeling for there. He was really, you know, he was pushed right in the back there. He's clutching his shoulder. Hope everything's okay. Still just in a bit of discomfort there, Lewis Isles. Let's hope it's not a injury. Looks like he's going to carry on. I'm I'm just trying to think. Um, we we do go to many grounds here. This is your this is your first time at the Armitage. Um, It'd be cool if we could make like a little list, like almost, almost like the '92 challenge, but of uh, <laughs> university grounds. Because I think I've got a few. What what uh, what's yours looking like? It's probably quite good. I, do you use footballology, Bix, to count your games? It's a. Uh, I hope someone know, uh, back home knows what. Uh, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, so I, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a my, my ground type of oh, guy. Well, Absolutely I'm... terrible at it. It, 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 cra it crashes. I can't I can't load photos of the games I go to. <laughs> Honestly. But, uh, well, you can only do that on Footballology if you pay for the subscription, which yeah. uh, I obviously don't. Um, but I've managed to add a few of the uh, grounds I've been to following Solf uh, following Solf University. Really? There. Yeah, Collier's Park was there where we watched the Wrexham game, but that makes sense. Oh, of course. That's an excellent challenge there. Last ditch challenge. Done really well there to cut out the Unsworth attack. But yeah, so I, I, Collier's Park, I think I also got... Um, Bolton University's ground, I want to say, maybe. Oh. Or I got I got another, and I did also add my high school uh, for a game I've, I watched of a high school football a while ago. Fair uh, enough. So I think I'm on, I think I'm on 47 as of uh, Saturday, as of yesterday, as of time of recording. Uh, where the Agbra Stadium in Kidderminster, as I mentioned already, was uh, my destination. Um, but I might get rid of those university football grounds. So it does I kind respect of, it. It does kind of tarnish the actual reputation. You'll, you'll just have to say that it was like it was Salford City playing Bolton Wanderers and stuff like. <laughs> yeah, I'm competing with my brother as well. If you're watching, Tom, you're almost definitely not. He gets so sick of me talking about Salford Sport TV. He's a real hater, I have to say. Um, competing with him this year, who can go to the most games. It's quite a funny little ironic bet we made. And this Hang could on. be Salford's chance. What a save from the keeper. Wow, and the, the men, the men can't believe it. They've gone to the ground because it was, it was just, it was just there. It was on the door, and the keeper has just pulled it out of the heart as it goes for a corner. Oh, what do you make clean of it? Cut. Was it James Hickey in there? He was. He's burst his way forward, and he, he came in to, he got a tap there, and the keeper's just made himself really big. I can't believe it, honestly. Salford really knocking the door now. They'll be gutted if they don't find something in this game. Yeah, those lads are definitely offside. They've been caught by behind the line. The appeals will be useless. And it's competing. A com it's just keeping that composed energy now because when you miss these chances, it's going to wind you up. I, uh, of course, this is a very different game to what happens with me on a Monday, but I missed a few playing five aside, and it just it, 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 you just want to just work harder, get more involved, do this, do that. But you've got to work as a team, and that's the key. Yeah, they really don't want to lose their heads. It's been a scrappy game, but it's almost been a game plan for both teams. Uh, but yeah, Salford really don't want to let it become a burden to them now. Uh, 
wasn't on the name of the room. It's, it's like 11. Yeah. <laughs> that is an absolutely crunching tackle. It's clean, but it didn't look it. Yeah, it was a really tough one. But it's, yeah, you're right, it was a clean, clean tackle. Salford now just being caught out going into the box. Uh, they do look like they're struggling in this game now. They're going to keep putting on that pressure, though. You know, if they are not able to claw themselves back into this game, it, it won't be a, a lack of trying, that is for sure. Yeah, no, a really great effort. Something that I, I want to, you know, maybe add is the fact that it is on a weekend. We are used to these games being played midweek. You know, you don't have anything on the night before, really. Chance to relax. Yeah, but absolutely. I mean, a lot of the lads might have been out drinking last night, out all day yesterday, doing whatever. But it hasn't really shown in this game. Oh, ne no. Neither they teams have looked sluggish or lethargic. They've just been, it's just been getting at each other. Um, but yeah, after that goal, um, it could have gone either way. Either team would look likely to score um, at times in this game. <laughs> James Dickey is not happy. He is not happy. He's clearly uh, losing his head. And the ref is going to need to calm him down. His own players are going to need to calm him down now before he gets himself in trouble. Salford Spot also do apologise for any offensive language yeah, you've not, heard. I'm not sure if the cameras will pick it up, uh, the mics here. But um, yeah, he's, clearly the frustration is getting the better of him there. But as you said earlier, you know, they can't let that happen. They need to calm down, otherwise they will just capitulate. Do you know what? I, I would say that um, Unsworth, yes, they have physically been just matching Salford's energy, but verbally, you know, they've not really been giving it as much. When their football do the talking, because they're free kick whipped in! And what an effort! It goes wide, and it was it was pretty much straight from the training pitch. That was excellent form. Just couldn't get it off at the end. Wow! Now that was a chance to go clear in this game for Unsworth. What a ball in! It was whipped in perfectly, and the lad who got his head on it, bloody hell, did he get his head on it? Absolutely. He was really thumping it in, and it just sort of flew maybe a few inches wide of that far post. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it's an unfortunate one for Unsworth. If that's their only chance now to go clear and Salford get another goal, they will be uh, really gutted. <laughs> Salford breaking forward here now. First attack in a little while. Hiles is onside. Oh, that's a really good header there. Ambitious with the kick. And all that to say, the ball just ricocheted off of San. Who comes onto the field, the number 17. I love a number I love a number 17 in football. Yeah, I agree, mate. I, I love them like high teen numbers uh for football kits. They're great for like winger, great for a fullback. Oh, it's another great save by the keeper. Look like uh Byford again. And now Hickey is chopped down. Oh, I don't know about that one, ref. And he, <laughs> he was already fuming with the last challenge, and now he was cropped down and Unser attacking now. Centre after's really well there. I think he uh, was holding on to the player, but he just let go at the crucial time not to give away a penalty. Is, 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 is James Hickey moved into midfield now? It looks like he might have done. Oh, they need the goal. The, the clock's they do, checking. yeah, absolutely right. I'm surprised the referee's got him all, got to let him get away with all these things he's been saying. Yeah, I am surprised. I did, like I said, I spoke to him at half time. He said he's not too. He didn't really want to have to hand out loads of cards because the players do get fined for him. Um, but there is an, a, a, at a certain level that you can keep that uh, ethos at. Sometimes he's really, and sometimes just giving that one yellow card or, you know, probably. No, no. Whoa! Cut myself out there. What an incredible kind of clearance off the line. Did you see that, Bix? It was right off the line. Was that number 17, Sam, we were talking about? Well, I, I was messing about with Amelia on the camera, and I apologise, because whoever did that is going to be absolutely livid. I've messed it up. But, um, Have we not caught that on camera? Potentially not, but it's, my, it's my fault. It I'll was headed in by the Unsworth uh, player, and then it was a great header off the line to stop a certain goal. And, and they look like a real aerial threat, don't they, Unsworth? Oh, my goodness. They do. They do, absolutely. Um... 
They'll be, they've been unfortunate not to grab a second in this game. It's floated back post. Headed away. I don't know. I would say um, there is some similarities and some differences. And one of the main differences, I think, is the third's use of just playing it in the air a lot of the time and, you know, electing for these longer passes. The seconds and the first do keep it quite tight, Nate. And it just isn't translating. You can hear a few of the shouts from the silver players here now. They're getting at each other. They need to compose themselves and play as a team. Otherwise, the game will just come away from them. And he's took the charge for his side, staying down. But he's done a good job there. Listen, the cost can't pick it up. He's had to just try to play out of his feet. Didn't want to give anything easier away. No, he's one inside a goal kick here. Mm. Similar to a basketball when you, you fig figuratively, uh, you, you take a charge where you just stand like this, someone hits you, and you can win something for your side. Yeah, the, you, the referees have got to give a lot of leeway for goalkeepers, otherwise they will just get absolutely bullied. Um, so that's always one thing to take into account when looking at a foul there. Oh, and there's tons of keepers gone flying in there. God, that one, that one must have hurt his coccyx. That's often our chance. He's just about got back to his line now. Oh, that's a overshot pass. You can really see the frustration here at Salf, uh, in the Salford team. Knocked on well. Yeah, he's definitely on side there, but he sort of ran it into nowhere. Bennett collects from the weak cross. It's not the best kick there, but it's won back by Sam here. Still got it now. Oh, and not needed from the number 12. He lost out on it fair and square, and he should commit really two fouls in the space of seconds. Salford now really looking to keep this attack going. The ball's put in. It's ricocheted out. It'll be a corner for Salford. Here's a chance to potentially get one back. They have got the aerial threats of their own to Salford. Quick substitution here. So it looks like Lennon Boyle brought off now. Tell you what, he's done a pretty solid job slotting into that midfield, as you said earlier. Usually a goalkeeper. And uh, yeah, actually a fun statistic for you that I figured out. Um, Lennon Boyle has made the most appearances by any player in the history of Salford University. Wow. How do you figure that one? Uh, James told me. Fair play. <laughs> That's another one to his tally today. Ball put in. Floated in well. It's scrappy. Isaac gets on the edge of the box. Tries to put one in. And there's calls. The shot can keep it. And there's not a goal. Just inches wide. He just looked to just rifle it into the roof. But a chance to go again. It's gone out for a throw in, actually, over in this uh, near side to us. They've come agonizingly close to so many occasions of Salford. But whenever I'm playing FIFA, Martin Tyler always says, approaching the final minutes, there's always that one chance the team will get. What minute are we on now, Bix? It can't be long left. It's the 80th. 80th. 10 minutes to go. Salford need to lighten up in that attack. They need to keep going. So if they want to keep them cup dreams alive, if they want... So get at least a shootout at the minimum. They have to make it matter. 
It's a nice little one too there on the flank. Tell you what though, it's been a really tight performance from the Unsworth, Unsworth team. Uh, oh, again floated just too far. But no, I was just saying Unsworth, that it's been a really composed performance from them. You know, they've had a team that have really come to them, um, put in some challenges, uh, but they've, they've composed themselves really well. And they've got that goal sort of out of nothing, um, but they've been able to hang on to it. It's really well done there. To keep the ball now. The new man on the pitch here, 14, trying to make his way past. Lewis Hiles with an attempt, goes well wide. <laughs> yeah, it's offered the two at the back. As Fing stands pushing those fullbacks up high. Yeah, they need to now. You've got it's to take the risks because, listen, you'd, you'd rather go home 2 0 down. Yeah, as you say, in the cup, there's uh, nothing to lose, you know, coming, especially coming to this last 10 minutes. Put everyone forward. Ball's put in. Hickey Touched. tries bringing it down. Oh, it's cleared, but can Sulfur collect? They can now at the back. Oh, that's really nice. Surely there will be a few minutes added on near the end, of course. Well, here we go. This could be the chance, Bello. Oh, it's an incredible challenge from the number 69 there. Really good block. Oh, it's so unfortunate again. So close for Salford. They've won a corner, though. It's not over yet. They're and still fighting. They've got the momentum. They do, absolutely. Momentum's huge in football, as we all know. Corner floated in. Header is won, but it's gone over. Been told last two. Last one of the men on the pitch. I, I have it down. Well, at least still another five, five, six, seven. Well, we got to end it. We're coming, certainly coming to the ending stages of the game. Uh, perhaps one of them got that from the referee. Depends what he's added on, really, you know. Still pushing forward now, Salford. And I, I cannot wait to see uh, the development of James Hickey into these teams. Of course, a first year like us. So we've got two more years of him playing. And well, just to see him in the seconds of the first will be incredible. Shouts, screams, no stopping of the match in progress. Big credit again to the referee. He's clearly got a few big characters on this pitch to yeah. deal with, and he's done really, really well. In my 21 years of watching football, this is the most lenient performance I've ever seen from an official. Can't complain, though. No, it's, it's, it's nice to see, because there's clearly no bias. You know, no both, excuses as well. But, yeah, both teams have had the same treatment, uh, so they can't complain, really. But then again, like, if, if you're letting... All of this happened. If it kicks off, he's going to be the man to blame. Yeah, I suppose you're right. It certainly could. From some of the stuff we've heard that hopefully haven't been picked up on the camera, uh, there's a lot of tension between the two teams here. Oh, <laughs> oh gosh. Playing nice, kicking there we go. off. And the blown for full time. We've not got the full scores down. Tensions boiling, not ideal. And this is not what we want to see at the end. Yeah, it's 
ugly scenes at the end of the game. I think the ref blew early because it was oh, five of minutes early. Off. Hopefully they just leave it on the pitch. Um, but yeah, Salford would be gutted after such a strong performance. They're just coming up short. But it's a credit to Unsworth. You know, Unsworth so consistent, um, and they'll progress. Salford gutted, but um, keep it professional. And I think it's all uh, the little, little scuffle we might have seen has all died down, and the uh, sportsmanship has returned. But as the league comes to an end and the cup run comes to an end. Oh, yeah, we're just wrapping it up quickly. Nah, you're good. Um, yeah, well, the lads go again. I think, you know, the league's wrapped up. It's going to be upsetting, but look at it overall. Look at the bigger picture. Still got a trophy in the cabinet. Thank you very much for everyone watching, both through Unsworth and through us. Ivan Bix Williams, Ollie Spencer beside me, Amelia Hustleby behind the camera. Thank you very much for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Oh, lads, a tough one to take. How did you see it going? Uh, I thought it weren't our day today. They were a better team. I don't think... I always say you only get out what you put in, and I think we didn't put enough in. We were unlucky with the penalty. We had a few good chances, but just today weren't our day, really. So, congrats to them. They're a better team, but I think on our day, we probably have them. And, you know, it was a very physical game. You know, both you and Unsworth putting in some big challenges. How do you, how do you handle those type of games? Well, I think the ref was easily influenced by the other team, to be honest, because he was a bit soft on... Uh, it was a bit soft on them, but we we we, we lived up to their, uh, their their talk, let's say, because they were getting very aggy. But I think they got in their heads a little bit, and yeah. And um, you know, unfortunately, it's not the ideal result going out of the cup. But you've got you've got the league. I know it's it's, it's relatively wrapped up, isn't it? But how do you go into these remaining league games? Um, just got to stay clear headed and focused, like usual. Put out what we do in training and just keep going ahead with it as usual. It's, a, it's an unfortunate result. Would you would you, uh, would you think you, either of you would have been on penalties if it went to it? Um, if we kept our heads switched on, definitely we could have taken it during penalties. You just feel like we just uh, we just fell into their trap and started playing the same way that they was instead of playing our solid football. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, it's best of luck with the rest of the season and commiserations. Thank you. Thank you.